So I've been working in engineering management for a number of years now, and in that time, I have interviewed a lot of software developers. And do you know a red flag that gives away somebody as perhaps not being such a strong candidate in a screening interview? It's when I ask you a technical question and you say you can't remember. So for example, if it's a front end engineering interview, I might casually ask you in conversation, talk to me about how you choose between Flexbox and CSS Grid. And I'm asking that question because I want to see your thought process and I want to see how you articulate the pros and cons of each. There's obviously no correct answer in a job interview, but there is an incorrect answer and it's the one that I hear a non-zero number of times. The worst answer to this kind of question is, oh, sorry, I can't remember that one, I forgot. Like I'm not testing your memory, I'm testing your skills. And if that's the way that you approach software development interviews by trying to memorize a load of stuff as if you're going into an exam, then you're doing yourself a disservice. A software engineering interview is not an exam like you have at school. School exams are indeed mainly about memorizing facts and being able to recall those facts in an examination scenario. But for job interviews, in this field in particular, what we do is called a skills-based interview. So as your interviewer, I'm not looking for what facts you've memorized. I actually don't care much at all about what you remember. If you can't remember something, that's fine. I'm actually looking for what skills have you picked up in your experience so far. This is why, for example, I've never had a problem with people Googling things during a job interview. So I've had this situation before. I was interviewing a candidate once in person and we had a laptop on the table like this because we've been looking at their GitHub profile. And I asked them a question about API design, I think. I asked them something about cause headers. And the candidate pointed to the laptop and said, I actually don't remember what those cause headers are, but do you mind if I quickly Google it? I was like, yeah, of course you can Google it. At least in my book, that's absolutely fine. Other engineering managers might disagree. But the way I see it, I'm not testing your memory. I'm testing your ability to solve a problem. So if you can Google what HTTP headers you need for cores and come back to me with an answer that explains how you'd implement that and what considerations you'd need to make, then great, that's a good answer. That's how it works in practice, essentially. I don't care if you don't remember the names of those actual headers. I mean, who actually remembers the names of all the cores headers, right? But I do care if you don't even know where to start because that shows inexperience. So let's imagine a more tangible example with some code. So let's say we're doing a code pairing interview like this, and I give you this empty function and I ask you to reverse this string, this input string here. Now one solution might be to create a resulting array of characters, we'll call that result, and then loop through this string backwards. So with i starting at input string dot length, greater than or equal to zero, and then i or minus minus, push in input string at position i, and then join that resulting array back up and return it as a string. This is probably one of a hundred different ways that you can solve this. Now, if I gave you this problem in a job interview, there's some parts of this that I'd expect you to know how to do just from experience, but some parts of this you might need to Google. So I'll probably expect you to know that you need to iterate backwards through this string somehow, either with a loop or a map function or whatever you wanna do. I'd expect you to know that you would also need to assign some memory somewhere in your function to store the reversed string. So there's a bunch of ways you can do that, but essentially that's it. A loop to go backwards through the string and some memory. That's the skill aspect of this problem. I'm testing your ability to break this problem down into those individual steps. And then maybe during the interview, you know, we'd have a conversation about the time and spatial complexity of doing it this way versus other ways you can do this, because there's a lot of ways you can do this. But what isn't a skill is remembering the syntax for this decreasing loop here, right? And that's the reason I chose this particular example of solution, okay? So you probably do know how to declare a for loop with an index of decreases like this. But if you've forgotten this syntax, you find yourself in a really high pressure job interview situation and your mind just goes blank and you just can't remember how to make this i variable decrease inside that for loop, then do you know what? That's fine. Just say, I know we need to iterate through the characters of this string and I know that we need to create a temporary variable to store the results. Do you mind if I just Google the syntax for creating this for loop? I'll be fine with that because your memory is not the skill that I'm testing for. So yeah, focus on building the skill to solve real world problems and focus on your ability to explain your thought process. If you want to outsource some of your memory to Stack Overflow or Google or ChatGPT, then I'm actually fairly cool with that. And you'll find that most hiring managers are cool with that too. So next time you're preparing for a job interview, stop worrying about remembering syntax or remembering acronyms or buzzwords or technology names. Focus on practicing the core programming skills. And don't be afraid to ask the interviewer if you can Google some syntax or some terminology that you've forgotten. 
So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you wanna have some actual coding practice, then I have a couple of recent videos on my channel that show you how to do some popular leak code problems. So you can check out one of those on the screen in this little box right now. But until next time, my name is James Charlesworth and this is Train to Code on YouTube.